Yo, with so much content online, there's only one storytelling platform that keeps you inspired, calm on the daily, and always informed, and that is Flipboard. Flipboard curates the world's story so that you can be smarter in your work, life, and play. Choose from thousands of topics to personalize Flipboard and get the latest stories from the best publishers and experts delivered to you 24-7. Used by millions of people every day, Flipboard is how people move themselves and the world forward. Get started now at Flipboard.com. You're listening to another Island Block original program. Hey, yo, this is Meth right here, and you are now tuned in to cocktails, movies, and stuff. Pause on cocktails. Wu-Tang forever. Peace. Mere alcohol. Cocktails, movies, and stuff. A little bit more in my cup. Freddie A. and that. <laughs> Hop it, everybody. Total Malik, what's going on? And welcome to another episode of Cocktails, Movies, and Stuff. A show that's all about what's fun to drink, what's fun to watch, and of course, what's fun to do. Hop it, everybody. I am one of your hosts, Freddie G, aka Fred Rock from the island of Guam, and I'll be giving you all the. The opinions of a writer here on the show today. We have uh, Nan Savage, of course, here. Hello. The cool kid. And we got a guest host, my man, Kevin Clayton. Yeah. Producer extraordinaire. What up, Kev? What's happening? Kev Kev, uh, produced our our, uh, theme song with the beautiful Tanel. And uh, he's also so much fun. Yeah, right? And then you're also a producer for the Grammy-nominated group, Quattro. Quattro Sound, yeah. Quattro Sound. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for sitting there for Avery, man. Thanks for Appreciate having me, it. man. I'm excited. Yeah? Let's do this. Yeah. Did you have a good weekend? Man, I can't even remember my weekend. <laughs> but I know Not it was good, good cause it, <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> but I got kids, so, you know, it's like ripping and running. I'm trying to... I had my son had a basketball game, did really well, and... Uh, I, I don't even know. Kev just got back from New Zealand and Australia. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, exhausted. So he's still yeah. a little bit on. I'm tell. still a little off. still got you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Do I look that bad? She said, look at your <laughs> eyes. Look at, it. look at your eyes. Oh, you're good. Ah, so, yo, let's pick this up a little bit. So we got a, we got a guest in the house. A very, very special guest. Somebody I go way back with. Way, way back. Way back. Yeah. <laughs> he is a NFL player from the uh, he was a wide receiver in the NFL, played six seasons, but he's a USC legend, still holds the record for pass receptions, right? Most pass receptions. And uh he is my guy. Let's give a hand for Mr. Kerry Colbert. Hey, appreciate it. What up, coach? Not much, not much. Happy to be here today. Man, thanks for coming through. We've been trying to do this, but you're so busy, uh, coaching. <laughs> oh, yeah, but this is the perfect time right now. The season hasn't started yet. We're just about a week and a half out, and, uh, you know, so I'm happy to be here and talk some movies, movies music, music, and stuff. <laughs> and cocktails, don't forget cocktails. And cocktails, yeah. yeah. We, uh, yeah, I had, to, I, had to, I had to dig a little bit for, for you on that, because, uh, Carrie, you're not a big drinker, so. Not big. Not big. But I was trying to find smart something man, a little different. Man. So, <laughs> 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 me and Kevin are both hungovers, so and we're like, "You're so smart." smart <laughs> that, I ain't gonna lie, that was me this weekend because oh, yeah? uh, I have friends. I, I I had some friends that I hadn't seen in like 20 years, and we uh, all got together, and uh, we all grew up together. So, um, we were drinking. That's and then the drinking best and, and the worst. Yeah. Friends come to town. Mm-hmm. You're like, my friends are coming, and then you're yeah. like, I need to prepare to be hungover for three days. You need a vacation right. after. You need a, yeah, you need yeah. a break it's for reals. But it was crazy because I'm, I'm me. It was me. It was like five guys, and me and one of the guys were the only ones single. Everybody else had three kids or more, and so it was like it was their families were there too. So it was cool to see the kids, but they wanted to really get out and do something. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As, like old times. Like old times. There you go. So. Um, but yeah, man, thanks for coming through. No doubt. No Thank doubt. you. Happy to be here. So, um, well, look, let's let's, let's get let's just get ah, let's get this going. I don't know why I'm tongue tied today. Um, but uh, it's you're tongue tied every day. I am tongue tied every day, huh? <laughs> He's shaking his Shut head up, yes, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a writer. Like that. That's why I'm not I'm not meant to be on the, on a mic. I'm meant to just be writing stuff. <laughs> so anyway, it's the happy hour. Uh, so um. Today, like I said, I've been, I had to kind of dig deep down to find something for Carrie because we were going to try and find... Everybody's talking about this Hennessy White. Man, I, I have had have that. Have you had it? Mm. It is amazing. Mm. You, you, can, like you can't get it here in the U.S. You have oh. to get it outside, like in duty-free 
Or oh, and I was trying to find it for known you. Known on my way back, I could have picked some up. I know, right? There Shoot. You go. But yeah. no, it's because you can't the, if you just go into the liquor store in the airport to get. They, they, unless you have a ticket out internationally, they won't give you any liquor. I've tried. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I'm serious. Season. That's a season. Wow. I'm yeah, serious. Yeah, right. Better than right here. Seasoned alcoholic. Is what <laughs> you got your alcohol card on you. Go. <laughs> but yeah, you've had it, right? Yes, and it's amazing and uh, smooth. Like I said, I don't drink much, so to to have that the Hennessy White or White Hennessy, whatever you want to call it, it was it didn't make it seem like I was I had any liquor. It was just kind of it was, really? it was, that, it was just that that smooth. smooth. Huh? <laughs> yes. I, felt, I didn't I didn't feel bad the next day. And what? Well, how much did you drink though? I mean, you know, I'm not really a big yeah, drinker, that's but, but it was still amazing. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, it's more I'll be the judge if it really... I know, right? Yeah, I'll be the judge if it really gives you a <laughs> yeah, hangover no or doubt. not, okay? No doubt. But no, if you guys get an opportunity to, to fly out somewhere or get somebody to get it for you, yeah. definitely hey. do it. But let me know. Call me. Call me back <laughs> yeah, on the I'll show. I'll let you know. Yeah, I'll call back you back on the show. show. Yeah, yeah for sure. Because it was funny. I, right when you hit me, I was at the barbershop. And I was telling my barber, I said, hey, you heard of this white Hennessy White? And he went and grabbed a bottle and pulled it up. Oh, and nah. He had a little bit. And I was like, All right. and he's, he just had a little bit left. So I was like, I ain't going to mess with your I stuff, man. So I didn't want to try it. But well, yeah. What's the difference? How is it made differently? I, I don't, it's clear? I know. It's, it's clear I, instead I, of... That I don't even I don't know how it's different And I just know That it is amazing It's just amazing and I'm just trying to figure out With your barbershop I mean where, where you go What barbershop You go to Cutting your head You just slide right? out Some liquor like Man, But I got it you, right I, here I, got, I, I was telling him too Have you seen Have you seen the show Atlanta uh-huh, Did yeah. you see that 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 uh, barbershop episode that they that they? I don't did, know this, if I seen the barbershop episode. This this season they did a barbershop episode, and I, and let me tell you something. Like if you go to a black barber, oh, yeah, it so. literally was like the epitome of going really? to a black barber. Oh, yeah. It was it was one of the funniest things. Oh, and yeah. I told my barber like, yo man, you gotta watch this because this is you. You ain't yeah. as bad as this dude, right, right, right. but this was you. It was <laughs> it was as pretty bad dope. or as cool. No, it's bad. Like it, <laughs> the dude was literally on the phone. He got the Bluetooth uh-huh. on and he's talking. And and you don't know if he's talking to you or talking to dude on oh, Bluetooth while he's funny. cutting your hair. And then he's still trying to like do 16 other jobs while right. he's cutting your hair. Right. And he's, yeah, it was, it's, it's, and yeah, people are laughing because they know that's exactly what happens. And you don't know what the hell's going on. Like, yeah. you're sitting there, hey, Bob, he starts talking, and you're like, yeah, well, you know, and he's like, shut up, I'm not talking to you. And you're uh-huh. like, wait, what? And so, yeah, but you should check it out. But yeah, he, they they be doing well. My barber ends up. We're gonna have him on the show soon too because he's got a great story. Uh, and uh, but he's also a celebrity barber. So mm. he, um, not I'm not trying to drop names or nothing, but he yeah. he cuts a is lot. He gonna, of, is he gonna give us some? White give us a give us some tell him to bring some white Hennessy. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, 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 mm-hmm. yeah, have well, some white Hennessy. <laughs> right, and bring me back. That's the there concept. You go. And then yeah, I get a cut. I get a cut and a drink. Get a fag. Get some music. Oh man, that's a combination. Man, I can't. One stop shop. That's the shop. One stop shop. My barber shop. I mean, like like one day I I'll just say this. One day I walked in. He was cutting Mark Jackson's hair from uh, Golden State Warriors, yeah. the coach from Golden State, and also a pro player. Then James Tony walked in. Mm. Then Chris Mills walked in. So it was just like, yeah. oh my God, it was just like that I don't know who day. any of those people James are. James Tony's a boxer. Chris, Chris Mills, Mills is a basketball, basketball well. player. Okay. And uh, okay. yeah, okay. getting educated okay. today. There you go. Yeah, she's, yeah. she's yeah. a. Yeah. I'm, I'm I play kind sports, of in that I don't follow too, them. What sport? She's a good actually, football player. Yeah, we met playing football, actually. Okay. Mm-hmm. She's a good wide receiver. Okay. Actually, yeah, man. She's talking shit, actually. Yeah, she's talking <laughs> mad <laughs> smack yeah. to me on the on field. Uh-oh. So, yeah, yeah. She's she's the Steve Smith. The, I got the Steve Smith of women, I <laughs> guess you, you could say. <laughs> Tough, sure. talking mess. That's sure. it. Drinking. So yo, so check this out. Like we it. so I got you're gonna laugh. This it's this it's this drink called it's a it's an aperitif, okay. which sounds real bougie. Um, but it's something you drink right before like um it's something you drink uh like you know, kind of get your appetite going. Okay. And I and I so I did the research in the south of France or like in different parts of France they have this drink, but all, they're all different. This is called Floc de Gascon. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I said that right. Some French people are gonna be mad at me, oh, but yeah. it's like Put a little uh, bit more a, spit on it. And there then you, you got go. It. There, ah, and it's, uh, but it's a it's a it's a wine and armagnac, so it's kind of like a cognac. Okay. I, got, I mean, it's it's a wine and cognac kind of thing. It's a sweet wine because you said you like sweet wines, right? Yeah. So this is okay. something that you kind of yeah you sit right before it's, you start eating, hanging out, and stuff yes. like that. So um, and then we play this game on here. Um, called Flavor Time. I don't right. know if you. Uh, and so we got 20 seconds 
to once you try it, you try and see how many flavors you can taste in the drink itself. Mm. Man, yeah, that's gonna be tough. We competitive right, here we in here sometimes. Here we go. Yeah. You say yeah. he's not a drinker, so you I gotta get my know. mind right. Wide, <laughs> wide, <laughs> wide palate, right? You know <laughs> <laughs> so here, I'll, I'll start it off so you can see how we do it, right. and then we'll go. All right, all right, all right. Nan, you going? You going? Yep. Twenty right. seconds. Yeah. Go. Mm. Wow. You get um, you get that like raisins, and you get um, like a little peach. No, that was the only one I was gonna get. <laughs> um. Wow, it's it's sweet. It's really it's sweet. It's really sweet. It's really sweet. I'm not a sweet kind of guy, but sh that's all I could get right now is like peaches, raisins, maybe some pears. Yeah. Damn you! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at this game, and I actually had some today. <laughs> you want to go next, or? I mean, sure. Let's do it. All right, ready? Go. It's like okay, okay, okay. Yeah, there's definitely fruit. <laughs> definitely. That's Sugar. Not it's really, it's really good. You like it? It's good. really good. Yeah, okay. I think because it's so sugary, it makes you want to eat. Yeah, food, I think which so makes too. makes makes sense. Yeah, I definitely need to do. I that. get a point for that, right? There you go. All right. Anything else? No, that's it. All right, all right, Carrie. See what you got, man. It has a little bit of amazing in it. Um, <laughs> I, like I, you know I love that. Yeah. I think you already got it. You we already got it. All the other fruits. I can't. I don't want to say the same ones, but it has a little bit of amazing and a little hint of. Um, you know, a little sweet and a little you, amazing. You digging it though? I'm digging like it. it. Okay. I'm digging it. Okay. Yeah. Good. Nice. That's good. All right. I gotta write the name down because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pronounce it or say Dude, it. I, when I was looking at it, I was like, uh, I don't know how I'm gonna say this on yeah. the air, but yeah, it's it's <laughs> FL. And then so there, there's other cocktails and they're playing off the name because it's F L O C D Gascon or whatever. Yeah. So they're yeah. like, there's cocktails called Get the Flock Out of Here and gotcha. Flock Up, you know, you go, Flock man. You and all of that. Meet so, the Flockers. Meet the Flockers. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. 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 See that movie tie right there? there you know Look at that. See? Kevin is really like you can see he's he's thinking I'm about what's in it. He's like, my how can is I win this? I just you, drink. You more the wine guy drink. out of all of us though, dude. Nah, man. Yeah, I, I play you the role wife, real, man. real well. <laughs> you just you just chilling. My back. wife's palate is amazing. Yeah, yeah. She'll taste stuff and be like, wow, they have like dusted, you know, <laughs> cranberry. I'm she like, is, what? Yeah. And she'll be right. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, yeah. His wife's. Wife's from Oxnard. Yeah, wife is from Oxnard. Oxnard All that talent California, come from Oxnard. Man, man. Here we go. Oxnard, yeah. She just I picked knew, up. I a knew old, we had a little vibe. Yeah. Right? Oxnard connection <laughs> going on. She, yeah, she just picked up an old country boy. That's all. I don't. I don't See, know. it's all them the farms and the, the yeah. strawberries. Yeah. Exactly. All the fields out there. You know, we know our fruit. You know what I'm saying? Out Speaking there. of strawberries, strawberry no. festival. <laughs> I know, right? Come check it out in May. Point for you, Kevin. There you, there you go. go. There you go. Well, yo, let's take a break. Um, and when we come back, you know, we're going we gonna to chop it up here with, with Carrie and, and also hit our cocktail corner. I'm going to actually make a cocktail with this Flock D, whatever, Gascon, whatever you call it. Um, so I asked Carrie, so, you know, Carrie is picking the music today. So I asked him three questions. And the first question I said, you know, when you're in college, what was your game? Like, what was the song you, you were listening to to get you hype on game day? And so I gave him uh, Jay-Z, What More Can I Say? And the reason why I say that is because... Uh, that was the song I listened to before the Rose Bowl, before I was about to break that record you for receptions yeah. and all that you stuff. You had a game, and that game. It was, was my last game of my career. We were playing for a Rose Bowl and a national championship, and it was kind of what Jay was talking about in that song. I was feeling real bossy, like, Maybe. what more can like, I? I've been here four years. It's my last game. What I more can it. I say? You know That's what I'm dope. saying? That's yeah. dope. And let me tell you, my, I have so many friends that hate you because they're Michigan fans. Oh, yeah. So I oh, love yeah. it. I, I love it. It makes oh, me yeah. feel good. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love making them mad. So, sure. yo, check it out. It's right here on Cocktails Movies and stuff. Jay Z, what more can I say? You're on Island Block Radio. Yo, welcome back to Cocktails Movies and stuff here on Island Block Radio. We are here with Coach Colbert from USC. Fight on. Fight on, fight on. Fight on, fight on. So, uh, yeah, we're back. That was Jay-Z. And uh, we were just talking about that, too, with uh, with you um, just killing it on that game, man. You were just making so many Michigan fans. You, you broke their hearts, man. Good game. It was a good game. <laughs> That's an and, awesome uh, game. <laughs> yeah. Happy, happy we came out victorious. Yes, sir. So, uh, I, I don't even know what to call this cocktail. I was going to call it. Colbert's cocktail because uh -oh. I just literally made it up for you. I got a drink. I got a name. <laughs> got a I got a drink name. You got a drink name after you. You made it. I made it. <laughs> I'm officially a drinker. Right. Sign <laughs> line. That's it. 
So all this is really is that it's that Flock de Gascon, I, uh, and then I, I see yeah, Nan's laughing at my French, Flanc de and, um, de Gascon. and then a little he bit of Campari, and then some uh, salsa water. That's it. It's like a straight up you sitting out there in the barbecue chilling kind of drink. It's good. What do you think? I like it. Cool with it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm cool with it. it. I'm cool with it. it. It's, 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 I, uh, I like I like the flock day whatever guess, by guess. itself. You like it by itself? Okay. <laughs> this, I fool with this though. You know what I'm saying? Like I you said, you. like at the barbecue. This one, yeah, you can. You it's can. hot outside, like right today. It's really, really hot. Mm-hmm. Man, you give it's, me some of this outside, I'm gonna yeah. I'm right. gonna turn this thing up. Gonna sip a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has that taste. It's uh, yeah. It's 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 definitely special. Like you said, this week is is gonna be fire yeah so yeah this kind of i was thinking about that while i was trying to in my mixology mind there i go. was i good, was doing man. yeah so so i'm gonna let the listeners know so me and carrie we go way back which is and it's a crazy story of how we go way back tell um, the story i'm gonna tell the story, tell the story. uh so <laughs> um back in like the early 2000s though i uh I, I, I my buddies uh, my writing partners were all play football college football and um I hadn't picked a team in a long time. I didn't have a, I, I, like the whole '90s. My whole '90s was just all about film school and all this, this and that. And they're like, "Yo, me gotta pick a team." And so my little brother uh, was stationed at Fort Bragg, and I had just went to visit him because he was on his way out to a. Yeah, shout out to the 82nd Airborne, Dave, our engineers, mm-hmm. part of that yeah. too. Thank you for your service, sir. And um, and so I fell in love with the Panthers, Carolina Panthers, and that that year they were also killing it. That was when yep. they went to the Super Bowl. And so uh, a buddy of mine that I grew up with, it's like a big brother to me, uh, we just happened to be talking one day and I mentioned the Panthers and he said, uh, so this was a, a year later and we were talking about the Panthers and he goes, well, you know, Kerry's on there. I'm like, Kerry Cobra, yeah, he's their new their new, new receiver. He's like, yeah, you know him. And I'm like, <laughs> no, I don't. And he's like, yeah, you know Kerry. And I'm like, how I know Kerry? And he's like, you used to babysit him. I'm like, what? And he's like, what? you and Frog used to babysit that's crazy. Carrie. That's crazy. And I was like, what? And he's, I was Uncle like, that's, that's, that was <laughs> Carrie. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, wow. You know and so, saying? you never know. So, you never so know. all those babysitters out there, <laughs> you, you never, never know. Don't Take care yeah, of them kids. Make sure you cool. Were we, were we cool babysitters? <laughs> no, we were great. <laughs> That you know is not. You see, I, you see, I didn't say story. I was a big drinker or anything like that, so I didn't give me bad habits <laughs> we didn't, or anything. We didn't, we, didn't, we didn't impart any no, bad no. On, on you. But do you remember us I like do, you do? I do. And uh, oh, wow. you know, I was a I was a young pup and uh, <laughs> crazy, you know, crazy, right? Family friends. That's and, not what I was and, expecting. I know. <laughs> That's not the story. That's not the direction I thought it was going. Father Fred in the house. I know. You know right? I'm Uncle Fred. Fred. Really old, right? <laughs> I feel really old with that. Crazy. But then Carrie That's and I just he, you start you were, you know you were with the Panthers for almost five. Five years, right? Four years with the Panthers, and then uh, Denver, Denver, Seattle, Seattle, Kansas City, and everybody else after that. I feel like. But But then, what's crazy, and this is again how small the world is. My my girlfriend at the time, um, uh, you know, I was always rocking Panthers jerseys, whatever. And so I'm I'm at her her brother in law's house, and he pointed. He's like, "Are you a Panthers fan?" I'm like, "Yeah." Well, what's up? He's like, "You know, Kerry Colbert." I'm like. Actually, I do. I was like, he's a <laughs> he's personally, like, actually, yeah. yeah. And he's like, yeah. so do I. I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, I, I was kind of like his mentor. It was Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, 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 and yeah. so, so my ex I, now she's my ex, but my girlfriend at the time, her brother in law was his, like his mentor because yeah. he was a great wide receiver. Yeah, he played. He played receiver. He actually played for the Chiefs as well, and he was a, a mentor of mine. And it was a small, connected world. We should write a script. I'm serious, you know, man. For you real, write you a have to, it. man. And then what's even crazier is one of my mentors. So my mentor from college. He played in the NFL mm-hmm. um, Tony Brown yeah. He went to uh, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo And uh, his roommate Was Chamorro And um, and so I met him So and, your cousin? Yeah pretty much Right <laughs> Yes pretty much And uh, Then There's also, a story I, behind uh, that yeah, right. I see on Instagram Kerry's hanging out With John Diaz Cause yep, you guys yep, Gotta connect yep, too So yep, yep. On Another a whole, mentor Yeah another mentor there you go. So it's just crazy it's Like small we, world small, after small world all. Real Connected. small world mm-hmm. Crazy connected. West Side connected. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So now though, you you've gone on to now you're coaching over at USC. Yeah, yeah. So uh for me, I've always kind of known that I was gonna transition into coaching. Uh, my uncle was my high school coach, so um I've always kind of been around the game in that ca- capacity. And uh I always say that coaching is the closest thing to playing, and since they don't let me play anymore, you know what I'm saying? I might as well just go out there and coach. And really just I, you know, I really enjoy um, given the younger generation some of the game and knowledge that I've learned over the years 
and trying to help them fulfill and reach their dreams and their goals and, and, and win championships and stuff like that. So that's really, I, I really do have a passion for it. I enjoy it. And, you know, I don't feel like it's a job. Like, I don't feel like I've worked a day in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, awesome. playing playing football to now coaching, like, I don't feel like I've literally worked a day in my life. Yeah. That's dope. I see is you it, look so youthful, true? man. It's like I'm trying, man. You These young kids. Kid. You, I'm like, you wait gotta, a minute, how old are you, man? <laughs> I gotta stay young. You know what I'm saying? So, Kiki challenge. Like, I might be able to do <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You, still got you it. gotta stay. You gotta stay up with these young pups. Just don't you know don't don't dip too low, right? Don't dip <laughs> yeah, too low. Yeah, you might have a little back injury. <laughs> or something, but. No, I was gonna ask. Is it true that? Uh, I mean, as a coach, are you guys teaching the guys how to? tackle and hit differently now uh well right? we, we talking about that we were a little talking while about ago this because... earlier about the game is, a, is is safer you know yeah. and, and, and there's different protocol and um we're trying to prevent as many injuries as possible obviously yeah. football is a collision sport it's a pretty violent sport but nowadays there are ways to try to make it safer and yeah. in, in, in ways to teach the, the, the kids or the players to play safer so we yeah do, that's a priority yeah, for you as a coach right because a lot of Football takes a, a little rap, you know, nowadays and social media and just the media in general about concussions and CTE and, and yeah. all that type of stuff. So, you know, there, there are ways to, to make it safer and we, and we try to do that. We try to find those ways and, and teach those ways. Yeah. Good. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, you, so like, when you're a pro, this is what I was going to ask. Like, I mean, uh, I don't know if you know, like, I was a... I was fighting amateur and was mm-hmm. gonna turn pro, and then my I got a, a shoulder injury, so that kind of ended my pro my pro career before it even started. Mm-hmm. But like looking back on that, like with you, your 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 pro career, you had a great pro career, and then like was it? Did you have just wake up one day and just realize like it, it's time to, to make that transition? Uh, or like, no, I mean, and 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 honestly, I always tell younger players that there aren't too many players that get to choose when they want to end playing you know what i'm saying sometimes it just it happens and, right uh, it's not your choice whether it's injury whether it's opportunity and for me it, it was more so opportunity i wasn't getting those calls and those uh those looks anymore by teams you know what i'm saying and you start getting up there in age and uh the nfl is a big business so they can go get a younger player who's gonna be cheaper than you and younger than you and, and have more of a career ahead of them you know what i'm saying so it starts to become more about stuff like that and of course now if you're playing and productive you know what i'm saying you'll be there as long as as you're productive but if you're kind of like on the bubble or you know doing okay you know what i'm saying and that's kind of where i was i think at, at that mo- point of my career to be honest you know what i'm saying it was just like i stopped getting those calls so it was like all right i need to just go on to the next thing and and for me i had a plan and and you know, you always try to encourage some of these younger players to have a plan right. or mm-hmm. when, when football is over because it ends for us all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. There's not many sports that you can play for your entire life. You know right. what I'm saying? So you always have to have that 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 second plan uh, in action or uh, in the works. And for me, I knew it was going to be coaching, so I just dove right in. And how did, how did you – what was your first start in coaching? Like, how did that start? Um, you know what was ironic about my coaching career and my playing career was – I played five years in the NFL and nobody called me for a year. And I sat out, I trained, and I tried to get back on teams and I just didn't get a call. Um, The second year, I got a call from Lane Kiffin, who was my receiver coach at USC. Mm -hmm. And he had just got the head job at, at USC. He called me and I had already been planting those seeds with him about, hey, when you become a head coach Mm -hmm. one day, you gonna hire me, you know what I'm saying? So he called me. I became a GA in 2010 at USC. So I'm two years out of the game. I coached that year. I coached Red Ellison. I coached Jordan Cameron and uh, had a couple other guys. We had a good year uh, at SC. Uh, But I still had that itch to play. And I had been out of the game for two years. I actually went back into playing. I started training again. And that's when I played in Kansas City. So I got back in. And, um, you know, once I played in Kansas City that one year, the year after that, I didn't get picked up by another team and I said you know what I'm not going to keep chasing it this way so I'm just going to go back into coaching so then I went to Georgia State for a year coaching receivers I went to Alabama for two and this is my third year back at USC so it's kind of gone that way but it was kind of ironic how I was kind of in playing in coaching in playing back to coaching and now I'm in for the long haul nice do they tailgate before the games which ones (laughs) USC oh yeah for sure okay good you coming 
Yeah. Are you going to bring the drink? Well, I was making sure there was tailgating. She's going to have the drink. Oh, yeah. Oh, she, yeah, she'll have the drink. I thought, just, yeah, just I'll have the drink. drink. I'll come and tailgate. Mix it. Come tailgate. Come then hang come. out. I'm not going to be there. I'll probably be getting prepared for the game and all that <laughs> stuff. But we'll make sure that you get to the right tailgate party. Okay, there you, okay, there you, you know go. what I'm saying? That's my main concern. For sure. I mean, for go sure. team, go. But, like, you know, of course. Yeah, yeah, tailgating is yeah. where it's at. And not, not, not only are you coaching, you know, I mean, you're, you're, you're at USC, you're coaching the tight ends right now, right? Yep, coaching But you're also coaching some of these pro players, too. Like, you're training them? Yeah, so we've had a bunch of uh, NFL players train at USC, and and that's been a trend for forever. And whether it's because of the SBs are in town and everybody's flying into L.A. and they're going to be out here for a week and they need a place to train, or some of these guys just make their off-season home L.A. Um, so for me personally, um, I was fortunate enough to, to be around Odell Beckham Jr. a lot this summer. And with his training, he was training with our track coaches and, and doing some stuff at our facility. So just being able to, to be around him, help him, or just see him work out, you know what I'm saying, from a one-on-one level was was really eye-opening for me because I play with a lot of great players. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Calvin Johnson, Steve Smith, mm-hmm. um, Brandon Marshall. I mean, list goes on and on. But, you know, to see him and where he's at in the game today, he's one of the best receivers, one of the best players in the league. And to see him train every single day, and he's coming off an injury. Right. You know, he has a big year coming up. Um, you know, it was really good to, to kind of be around. And just for me, I really try to relay that to some of our players, you know, because I'm watching him work out. I'm seeing the work that he's putting in, and I'm trying to encourage them, like, look, this is what the best, one of the best players in the world is doing. You know what I'm saying? This is how he's working. Like, this is where you guys, if you guys want to have aspirations of playing at that next level, right. this is where the bar is, is being set. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, we've had a bunch of, bunch of former players uh, coming to train at USC this year. Jarvis Landry was there. Antonio Brown. Uh, RG3 actually actually came in through at SC. Um, literally, That's I, crazy. literally yeah. it's, a, it's a big, long, long list of guys that have come there this summer. And I can see that. I mean, being a player at SC, like just seeing those guys. Oh, yeah. that, I mean, just to have that those that caliber of player around obviously makes a difference and yeah. kind of like rubs off on a lot of dudes, I'm, I'm, I can imagine. For sure, because, you know, and I remember being that that student athlete where you were aspiring to be in the NFL. So those guys that played in the NFL, you just you had the wide eyes. You're looking yeah. at everything they did. And, <laughs> and for them to be trained at our facility and they get to watch them work out or maybe interact with them or maybe ask them a question or get some advice, you know what I'm saying? Those are things that are invaluable, you know what I'm saying, for, for a young man. It's a game changer. And, um, you know, so yeah. it was really, uh, really, really cool for for our kids and, and for some of those players to, to be able to be at USC this summer. Yeah, that's dope. Awesome. Yeah, because, I mean, I did that too with boxing. I mean, I happened to be in gyms where there was a lot of, and I was part of Prince Nassim's mm-hmm. boxing team, so I was around a lot of these you know, world champions. And yeah. same thing, I was always picking their brain. No always doubt. just trying to, like, figure out and watch them train. Like yeah. you said, just to see what they do different. And that's what the best people do. I mean, I shouldn't say the best, but I think that's what people that are aspiring to be the best, right. they do. You know what I'm saying? They're always learning. They're always reading a book. They're always trying to get some knowledge, some information, ask a question, watch a video, whatever it has to be. Because, you know, when you when you stop learning as an individual, and this is outside of sports, you know what I'm saying? Just like, life. Yeah, that's just life in general. Yeah. Like, those are the people that get the furthest. You know what I mean? The ones that are always looking for an edge or looking to learn and looking to grow. So, exactly. I encourage people to, 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 to do that Sounds always. like you, Fred. <laughs> nah, he's always sending go. me stuff to read, got always to. articles. Yeah. yeah, he's not shy. He'll ask anybody anything. Yeah. <laughs> I got to. Yeah. It's a compliment. Could, thank you. No, I appreciate it. Wow, Nan, Nan gave me a compliment. Yeah, you know, like, man. Uh-oh. That's, that's, that's rare, two, We got that's two coaches rare. in the house. She's Man. growing too. There you go. <laughs> this is the drink. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. I think there you go. This there you go. I think I that's it. <laughs> well, yo, let's take another break. And then when we come back, we talk a little movies. And also, I, I, I got to talk to you a little more boxing because okay. uh, there's some other stuff going on this weekend too with the boxing. Yep. So I asked Carrie's second song. I said, well, what was your, your pro game day song? Yeah, I had a couple. And you know what? I, I gave you the one I gave you was uh, Cali is Active. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and <laughs> me being a, a West Coast. California kid from Oxnard, California. You know what I mean. I was way out there in North Carolina or wherever I was. Sometimes I just had to yeah, that, had that mentality. You know what I mean. State of mind. I, I had to have yeah. that Cali Cali state of mind. I got that <laughs> yeah. Cali walk. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Where yeah. Kind of my foot kind of pointed a little bit out. You know what I'm saying. And, but uh, no, Cali is active. Is one of those that always get me right. You know, Battle Cat. You know what I'm saying. Produced it, and obviously you got corrupt Daz and Snoop. DPG. One of my favorite songs. Incredible. Cool. Well, let's check it out here on Cocktails, Movies, and Stuff. We got Cali is Active by DPG. Bang. 
Island Block Radio. Welcome back to Cocktails, Movies, and Stuff. That was Callie is Active by DPG. Um, we're here chilling with Coach Colbert. Now we're about to talk some movies. Um, we were watching this weekend because it just came out on Netflix called Father of the Year. With David Spade, mm-hmm. uh, produced by Adam Sandler's uh, Happy Madison uh, production company. And uh, Joey Bragg, who I actually worked with on... Um, he's Joey Bragg's the star. who I, I worked with him on Living Maddie, the kid. Oh. Uh, Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Um. So I was like, "Yo, let's check it out. See what it, you know. What we all think." And uh, um, we got some mixed reviews. I think, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. What'd you think, Carrie? What'd you think? I liked it. I, I mean, you know, once I got into it, um, I thought it was pretty funny. Um, I thought the characters, I thought the storyline, I thought the dynamics of the relationships between the fathers and the sons, and were 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 really funny. You know what I'm saying? And it was one of those movies that honestly, I probably wouldn't have watched it and. Unless it was recommended to right. me like that, so I, once once I got into it, I was I was all into it. I had to I had to see how it was going to play out at the end. Right, right. It was funny. Mm-hmm. It was funny. You have to get past the first twenty minutes. Yeah, because Nan, Nan's text to me was she was not happy. Like, I was not happy, and I, I really only finished it because Carrie did. So Uh-oh. there you go. Good influence. <laughs> I see, just, I had to. It was it's it's it is funny. It's funny. It, my my. They make a lot of race jokes in there, and. None of them. It's funny. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> He's like <laughs> David Spade. I'm yeah. like, love him. Yeah. yeah. He's colorblind in this movie. Oh, yeah, That's that not was, ruining that, that anything. Was, no, it's not ruining anything. <laughs> but he's, he's colorblind and he keeps like oh, talking about like yeah. he'll like he's talking to a black guy in an office and he like starts to tell this joke. He's like, he's like, hey, you want to hear a joke? Okay, so these two black guys wait. And then he like looks around and he looks at the black guy and he's like, Are there any black guys in here? Yeah. Because <laughs> he no, can't see people's skin. I thought, tone. That, was, I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, what's uh, the uh, uh, the one guy's name that the dad was the other dad the other dad I, 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 yeah but anyway he kind of remind me of Sam Darnold the way he looked <laughs> in his face like I was watching I'm like he kind of got a little I can see that yeah Sam Darnold no, look to him you, you know what I'm saying so that's I, that was another reason I had a little SC connection I, I felt you. like I was like it's the Sam Darnold movie right here I mean f- from the writer's stand- standpoint writer's point of view like it there was a lot of funny stuff there, but it seemed like the writer, who was also one of the uh, one of the writers, was the director as well. He wrote it with I think one of his friends or something, or his writing partner. But it was like I I, I kind of equated to like having a, a Ferrari engine, and then you're like, I'm gonna stick it in a golf cart and see what I can do. And I only say that because. <laughs> Um, the story, analogy. the story itself, because the the Ferrari engine is you got Davis Bay, you got Joey Bragg, you got a lot of people who were really funny, funny comedic actors. Yeah. And then the story was so, co- for me as a writer, was so cobbled together. It was just enough so that you could string a bunch of sketches out. Yeah. It was sketch comedy to a certain degree. Yeah. Yeah, they had a bunch of jokes and situations, and they were like, I have all these ideas. Let me just put it in one movie. And right. so it ended up being individual scenes were funny, but there was no the story, story just kinda, that you yeah. could connect well, with or yeah. care about. It, it, right. It was real basic, basically. Even like the the, the, like the, the relationships between the fathers and mm-hmm. sons were funny and yeah. the friendships yeah. and everything. Yeah. You know, like you're like, okay, they're cool, but nothing that you can really like connect with on it. But yeah. hilarious. But it was funny. funny. Yeah. That's like, yeah, yeah if, you, if you've got nothing to do and... And you're just chilling. You're like, what should we watch? Just and then I know you're here, especially people here in California and all the states where it's legal to do other things. Uh, you can definitely sit down and watch this movie and laugh. And um, enjoy it. For and sure. enjoy it, for sure. For sure. Uh, Nan watched Tao. I'm still in the middle yeah. of it. What did you think? Did anybody else here watch it? Mm-hmm. No? Um, I think that it... I liked it. It was good. It was just... Um, it's one of those... It's kind of like sci-fi, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah right? It's, it's like a sci-fi psychological thriller. You know how, like, have you ever seen, like, uh, what's that movie, Ex Machina? Uh-huh. You know, and it you're like, have there's, a lot of that. Yeah. There's, there's no way that that movie would have been good without, like, the super expensive special effects, and it just looked expensive. Right. And I feel like this movie would have been way better if it had a bigger budget. Cause I it see just, that. Because it just looks cheap, but it was good. I liked it. I enjoyed it a yeah. lot. And the actress... Um, um, awesome. Yeah, Monroe. Um, I forgot her first name. I just remember Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty cool. I mean, we're, we're, I'm, I'm like literally almost finished with it. And I was like, you know, it's... it's A uh, it's woman slow. gets kidnapped and she has to try to escape the house using her um, tech savvy ways. She's... I don't know. At one point, they say she's like fourteen percent above average. Yeah, right. Right. So the this guy, wise. this guy. I mean, we're not giving anything away. This guy 
uh, kidnaps her and some other people, and um, he's trying to study them because he's he's he says he's figured out um, this technology that could like literally save the world, like yeah. make the world better. But he's using these people, it's, and I think they're asking a little bit of that question, like should we sacrifice some people for the betterment of society? And so she ha- kind of had to. Um, yeah. trying at the same time, she's like, I don't give it. I want, I want out. Like yeah. you kidnap yeah. me. Right. Um, and yeah, she's there's... badass. So it was fun. It was fun to watch. And she's good looking. And yeah. the kidnapper is good looking. There's some sexual tension there. I liked that. Okay, I was. Okay. I was yeah, now, she was now cool. You're to pull me into this. Yeah. <laughs> Technology, nice looking lady. All right, all right. Not too shabby. Was, is there anything you're watching right now? Are you a big? Are you a big Netflix like binge watcher? Uh, what am I watching? I'm watching Power. Right okay, now. yeah. I'm a big. Power guy. Um, nothing on Netflix right now. Um, I know everybody was on like the last you or last, oh, right, right, last, right, chance, yeah, yeah. last you. chance you. Yeah. Um, I haven't got into it though, but you know, a lot of my, I'm watching a lot of football. Right yeah. Now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm getting, sure. Getting ready for Perfect. the season. Who's your, who's, who you guys playing first? We play UNLV at oh, home. Okay. Yeah, uh, all right. UNLV. So, um, running Rebels. Yeah. Well, be a interesting game, you know, because uh, we lost a lot of pieces last year. I was gonna say to you the lost draft to the NFL to graduation, so we're replacing a lot of people, and um, we'll see how the team shakes out. Are you are you excited for the year? You really excited? Always. I'm yeah. Getting, I'm, I'm getting itching. You getting, you getting itching? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm ready to get there this week. You know what I'm saying? So still got like seven more days before we kind of officially report, but I'm just, I'm ready. Wow. So everybody's kind of taking their time to yeah, chill a little yeah. bit before the, yeah. the craziness. Yeah. Players are still working out right now with our strength coaches and stuff. The coaches are kind of, this is kind of our downtime where we get to spend with our with our with families family. and stuff. And Because once the season starts, we're we're in for, for a long haul. So. Cool. And and we were talking early before the before we started the show. Um, tomorrow Saturday mm-hmm. is uh the fight between Mikey Garcia yeah. and um why am I forgetting dude's name? But he's a ne- he's a champion too, yeah. right? They're they're unifying the belts. Yep. Um, what do you think? Well, you know I'm riding with Mikey Garcia he's just because he's from Oxnard. <laughs> period. You know what I'm saying? So Team Garcia. But uh, now nah, it's gonna be an interesting fight. I, I'm gonna try to go with one of my team, my former USC teammates, and uh. Uh, you know, it should be pretty fun. I think it's gonna be a banger. I, I think, think that's so. gonna be yeah. a banger. I got well. I, 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 speaking of like boxing, because I I, I want to get your opinion because I know you're a big boxing guy. Love I'm, boxing. Did you did you come to love boxing because I mean you're from Oxnard and that's mm-hmm. a boxing town. Yeah, yeah. Is that kind of why? Yeah, that's pretty much part of the reason. I mean, I grew up in a boxing town and a lot of my friends they either boxed or trained. And one of my best friends, uncles, he kind of trained, did some training with some people. So he kind of would uh, train us a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but you know, growing up for me, like Fernando Vargas was coming up, Robert Garcia, who's like one of the top trainers, trainers out there now, he, he, he was, was fighting yeah. back then. And he was actually the first one really kind of to, to, to be a champion from Oxnard. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of fighters that have come out of Oxnard, born and raised, and then just come to Oxnard come. to fight and to train. I'm really close with uh, Victor Ortiz. You I know, saw, yeah. Um, you know, he's he's lived in Oxnard at times, and, um, you know, there's other people that have been there as well, so. He came real close with Mayweather. He just screwed know, it up. Man, he screwed it up. I know. I was, I was rooting for him, and, yeah. uh, you know, he uh, he's actually training for a fight, uh, possibly coming up with a— uh, Brandon Rio, so oh. maybe we'll see if that that, that could one, be a banger because yeah. you know that's just two dudes that's yeah. just gonna go to war. And they go back all the way. They both were born and raised in Kansas City. Oh, and, that's right. And then they both came to Oxnard. That's you know right. What I'm saying? And then I forgot they about kinda, that. They have what is a little, it with Oxnard? What's it? Do they put something special in the water? There? Yeah. Like, it's <laughs> the, it's, you know, there's it's a it's a big Mexican population. Yeah. So that yeah. if, if it's not soccer, it's boxing. Yeah. And, um, I mean, the only two. I will preface this. I lot the only two losses that I have were from Wainimi guys. Okay. But I got robbed in the in the um, Golden Gloves with one of them, so I really won that fight. <laughs> but then the second one, I took on two days' notice, and uh, I remember being in the ring with this this kid. He was good, but I was like, I had nothing. I yeah. had no gas because I, I I literally took He's the fight on two, two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, them Wainimi kids, man. I mean, that's yeah, that's man. they. It's a lot of good training out there. There's, yeah. a, there's a lot of good gyms, so a lot of people from Oxnard or other places they come there to train. So that's gotcha. why it's so good. And it's just, I think it's the reputation. So, like, when you're not from there, you want to go there to train just because you want the competition and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little lightning round. I want to see what you what you got. All right, all right. All right so, oh. um, let's see what you're I'm nervous. Here we go. <laughs> so, uh, Anthony or Wilder, who's going that? Ooh, 
Anthony. Okay. Uh, Triple G Canelo. <laughs> I am a big Canelo fan. Yeah. But, but Triple G, Triple man. G. Yeah. Triple G. Uh, Errol Spence or Crawford? When they, if we Ooh. finally get that fight, hopefully next oh, year. Oh man, I'll have to go Crawford. Yeah, I'm Crawford. right there with you. I'm with you I'll on go that. Crawford. One. Uh, Mikey Garcia and Lomachenko, because that's kind of yeah, the that's next the one big, that they're trying the to set up. Right. You know, I gotta stay. I gotta stay, stay at five. Stay. I gotta stay Oxnard. <laughs> Mikey Garcia, baby. <laughs> Man, you know Lomachenko ain't no joke. Ain't no that's, joke. That's, that's, but you would Mikey, like Lomachenko. Yeah, Mikey. Mikey. Mikey he's it's, smart. He's, he got the he got the corner behind. I I feel like he has the X factor. You know what I'm saying? With like his brother more. and his dad training and and stuff like that. And this dude's been around the game. He's a smart. To fighter. me, you know that's like the best boxing. Like two of the best. Like t- technically and fundamentally sound people in fighting no today and boxing today because Mikey's got incredible fundamentals yep. and his technique and then Lomachenko you can't even right. so I, I'm, I, I I'm, I'm yeah I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going with my with, with your heart with my, well, yeah with my head instead, <laughs> yeah, my heart my heart instead of my head on that one so uh, Lomachenko Crawford though Lomachenko Lomachenko wow I like, I like Loma Ah, I, I mean that one me That one where I'm just like yeah. I don't know Are these real yeah. fights coming up Or are you just like they're, Talking about they're, people They're all pretty much yeah. They're hypothetical But most of these are Like they're on the on the way To becoming reality so Let me ask you one Okay You got Joshua Wilder Who you got Deon, Deontay Honestly I, I, I'm gonna go with Joshua I'm Joshua. going Joshua Yeah So when I lived in Alabama I was living in Tuscaloosa, coaching in Alabama. That's where Deontay Wilder's from. Right, right. And any city I, I live in, I find a boxing gym just so I can train and work out. People like to go to 24-hour fitness. I like to go to the boxing gym just to get a little cardio and sweat. So anyway, I found my way to Wild Card. I mean, uh, Sky Boxing Club in, in Tuscaloosa, home of Deontay Wilder. And uh, I was getting trained by his dudes, and he would be in there sometimes. This dude is a... I hear he crazy. <laughs> and he looks like a basketball player. He's so tall. You know what I'm saying? He has really? long arms and he's like, he's not super duper heavy. He's no. a heavyweight, but he's not like. Yeah, he's skinny. He's yeah, I mean, skinny. He looks like a basketball player. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's like but six, seven. I've seen him throw his hands, though. What? Quick. This dude throw them hands, man. And yeah. and I like Joshua, too, now. Don't don't get it twisted. But I just. I, I, I The only reason why I say Joshua is I think if you saw the last fight with um with Wilder and Ortiz, I yeah. think Ortiz kind of showed no, no. something. But see, that Ortiz cat wasn't no slouch now. No, 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 no. Not that at dude all. Was, that dude was a. That was, he a, was yeah. a. That was a really good <laughs> fight. like a. But yeah, no, because you, you, you would know, if anything, they've always said like, because. The Klitschko brothers yeah. have been running boxing for so long. They were these uh, Russian fighters. They were like 6'6". Six, six, and n- most American heavyweights were still coming in around like 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, they couldn't deal with the height. Right. And they wow. said that all the American fighters that we should have are playing football and basketball. Because mm. once you get 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, yeah. you're either going to be a, a D-end or yeah. you're going to be football, playing basketball. Yeah. So. Yep. Um, so we, we're fine. Like Always Deontay. Ana- I love how like Americans analyze the... Like everything to do with sports. Have you ever seen what's uh who's the Trevor Noah? Have you ever seen his oh, yeah. spiel on um how Americans analyze sports? Mm-mm. Please watch it. It's so funny. It's so Check funny. It out. Check it out. All right, well let's take one more break and then when we get back we'll finish this up talking about some stuff. <laughs> so last song I said, Carrie, what what what's your what's your jam right now? My jam right now, I think I was saying uh O T Genesis, everybody man. That's kinda like one of my kind of gets me going i mean there's a couple songs that's out there you know what i'm saying and just while we're talking about it, i just want to throw out anderson pack from oxnard oh you know that's right <laughs> you know so he's another oxnard he's, product he's, you know what i mean I, I was gonna say one of his songs just just because but i was like you know that's cool oh, anderson with, pack uh, is dope like, nah, he dude is, dope. is killing it yeah, man so, he's, he's killing it on the scene it's another, but ot genesis everybody mad everybody mad check it out right here on cocktails yeah. moves and stuff Island Block Radio. Welcome back to Cocktails, Movies, and Stuff right here on Island Block Radio. That was Everybody Mad by OT Genesis. Dope. Dope song, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Get, Get it going. Yeah. Get it going. Keep it going. Get your blood moving. <laughs> getting older, you need that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> Who are you selling? <laughs> hey, so, the, you know what? A question I wanted to ask you. I mean, I, I don't I don't know. Um, I didn't get a chance to hear you got um, all, the whole interview what you did with uh, Q and, and Joe Sab, but... Um, Look, I mean, it, it, growing up in Oxnard, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, Polys, Pacific Islanders, mm-hmm. 
Guam, Samoa. Yep. Like, is that where you kind of got your like? Because you got love for for us Pacific Islanders. Mm, no I doubt. see it. So yeah. is that where you start, or was it from football, or was it a mix? It was a mix of uh, growing up in Oxnard. I mean, some of my best friends growing up were Samoan, and uh, so I just grew up as a kid. You know what I'm saying? And you know how the culture is, and yeah. they they took me in, and, and being a kid, I kind of like embraced it. And those are my best friends, and I played sports with them. You know, spent the night at houses. You know, just stuff like that, and. Um, same thing, college, everywhere I've gone, I've kind of like connected and, um, and that's just kind of how it is. Even, even coaching today, I mean, um, even in recruiting, you know what I'm saying? So we're, we're, we're dealing with, uh, players from all over and, uh, you know, some of these Polynesian families or kids that we're recruiting, um, myself and coach Nansen, who's Samoan, we have another Samoan coach, Lindy Vandermaid on our staff. You know, they throw me in there with them to go to go recruit these guys because of relationships with people that I've had or that I know. And, you know, how the community is, it's, it's, it's really small. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, um, you know, it's, it's just been a it's been a one love, you know yeah. what I'm saying? One yeah. love. All no, that's, for, that's dope. Since I was young. Yeah, because you, I mean, I think you, I mean, I think I think with a lot of us Pacific Islanders, it's like we seem to just we kind of we connect with a lot of like African Americans because I think our cultures are very similar at the yeah. same time you know yeah. and yeah. our foods are kind of similar yeah. too yeah. to be real right yeah. so, <laughs> so those are two we things. like to eat and music everybody and music. likes music yeah. you know and what I'm music. saying yeah so. Um, so okay, that's why you know I was I was always curious about that because I know that you, I mean I, like I said I, I got a lot of friends down in Oxnard. Right? Um, yep. I was dating some girls down in Oxnard. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> and there's a lot of a lot of us PIs down there. Already, already. <laughs> so and speaking of, of, of Polly's, uh, Kev, you were in New Zealand yeah. hanging out with some Maori. Yeah, right? man. Yeah. And yeah. the Aboriginal uh, people in Australia. of Aust- in Australia. Yeah. So. Tell us a little about about that whole trip, man, because you were down there for what were you actually down there for? We're down there for two weeks, man. And it was a, a blessing in disguise. My my daughter, she's 12 years old and she's a part of this choir uh, that we just put her in this year. And uh, as soon as we put her in, we found out from the staff there that they were planning this trip to Australia and New Zealand later in the year. And we're like, yo, <laughs> that that sounds like that might be kind of nice. So, um, Chaperone, you know, yeah, right. Can I follow <laughs> along? <laughs> So, you know, we put some money aside and uh, and did the dang thing. And it was great. It was about 40 people total because a lot of parents wow. went along. And I think it was about 12, 15 kids. And they went to different areas in the communities. They sang with some of the poly, like some, some of the schools, mm-hmm. kids. And, um, man, it was just mind blowing for me, really, because uh, we did get a chance to go to a couple of places where uh, we actually met some of the, the uh, Aboriginal people and some of the Maori people that have schools there. Or that they're where they have them set up to really talk about the culture and introduce people to you know the history yeah. and what's happened there and that's that's where I really got in touch with I'm hearing what you're saying and mm-hmm. I you know through meeting Fred everybody men that love is just like right. gosh no man, doubt. No I doubt. need that oh, in my yeah. life exactly. <laughs> for real yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. it's funny because you and you and Carrie have a connection too I mean it's it's kind of crazy the whole Bakersfield Oxnard connection oh, yeah. going on over there yeah so my my dad is from Bakersfield and my dad's side is family's from Bakersfield and my mom is from Oxnard and her side of the family's from Oxnard and yeah so I, I'm I'm married to an Oxnardian <laughs> <laughs> and you're from and I'm from Bakersfield, Bakersfield. And ask, me, ask me what my brother's name is nah nah Aww. what's your brother's name Kevin are you kidding me right now <laughs> Wow, Yo. look at that. You're making connections right here That's on cocktail insane, movies and stuff. Man. Small world, right? <laughs> Real small. Man. Yeah. So, but it, I don't know if you want me to talk anymore. There, yeah, yeah, there yeah. was some other things that I was really blown away when we got to New Zealand. The one thing that was really interesting, they started talking about the culture. Um, a lot of the, the Maori culture is still alive in New mm-hmm. Zealand, where some other places has been snuffed out. And one of the things that they talked about was um, next to the Zulu Nation. Mm. Oh yeah. Uh, Zulu, Zulu Nation and the Maori people are the only ones that were able to fight off the British the longest. Wow. And in fact, the the Maoris did it. And they they never lost. I think they said sixty percent of their community was still alive, and they ended up having a form of treaty with the British, not done anywhere else. Wow. So it's a trip when you get there because these got to be the most fierce people oh, that no. you you know ever been. But at the same time, they're loving, and the culture mm-hmm. is just about education and about family. Yeah. The art. Like all of the 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 um, the stones and the woodwork, it's, it's just man, it yeah. blew my mind. So okay. I don't know if you it ever knew mind. this, but uh, a tight end that I coached at USC, uh, Rhett Ellison, who actually plays for the 
He played for the Vikings. He plays for the Giants now. He is a uh, of Maori. Oh, is it? And his dad, Ricky Ellison, who played for USC and played for the 49ers, Super Bowl right, teams, right. all that stuff. He is as well. You know wow. what I'm saying? So, I never knew there was a. Yeah. I never. Yeah, they, they don't. They don't talk about that yeah. a lot. So, wow. I mean, that's one of those places like bucket list. I need to. I'm just yeah, about yeah, to want to get to. Got to get to. Because you've been to Samoa, right? Been to Samoa and. Uh, it almost changed my life in the sense of like, man, I, I love the islands. You know what I'm saying? And uh, beautiful, beautiful living, beautiful people. Mm-hmm. Um, it just kind of it changes your perspective. It gives you a different lens. You know, we we live, uh, we look at different, we look at things different over here in the right. states. Everything's fast paced, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, there are a bunch of people here and. Over there, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it gives you a different perspective of how, Absolutely. what's really important, you yep. know what I'm saying? Whether it's family, yep. whether it's the faith, and yep. you know, other things, culture, yeah. yeah, and how things just kind of continue to live on. I think, you know, some of the culture gets lost living in the States, you know what I'm saying? But when you go to the islands, you that stuff is alive and well. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? So, yeah. it's awesome. Cool. We got to get you over to Guam, too. For sure. We got to get you over Let's to Guam. Go. Get some food. Yeah, I know true. you like that food. Let's do it. I like to eat. Let's Kevin, do it. Kevin, did you have a Vegemite sandwich? Vegemite. Oh, man. I tasted some of the Vegemite. I like it. I know everybody I thinks did. I'm crazy for liking it. I like it. But I, I, I was a guy from New Zealand one time, and he, he gave me that. And he like, he put it like this thick oh, on the bread. Yeah, and I yeah. was like, and you're looking at it, you're like, that looks sweet. I took this huge nah, bite. I was like, what nah. did you give me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why is this it's in my mouth? It's salty, right? Yeah. Super salty. Yeah, it's super salty. Super salty. I like and it, though. They said there's certain percentages, depending upon how long you've been eating, that you're supposed to put butter with it. Did, did you uh-huh. just have butter on it? I don't know. I was not happy about yeah. whatever you gave me. I just got, you know how you want to taste something. I just opened it up and got a little knife and went like this. This first thing in the morning, my mouth just must have twisted <laughs> side. I was like, oh, because it was really salty. It's an yeah. acquired taste yeah. for sure. <laughs> Friend of mine went to, when she came back from Australia, she brought me like, you know, those little Ritz cr- uh, cheese and cracker things. They have Vegemite and cracker things. So I just, I was eating it that way and I dug it. I, you know, but I'm traumatized. I'm, I, <laughs> yeah, it's an acquired taste for sure. Yeah. Well, yo, that's our that's our show for today, yo, Coach. Thank you so much for no coming problem. through, man. Thank you. So nice having me. I appreciate yeah, you, it. You got to come back, man. Oh, yeah, you when the come barber back. comes, when the barber yeah, comes, yeah, yeah, when the barber hey. comes, I'm gonna get a cut. I'm gonna get a drink. drink. <laughs> we are gonna talk. I'm coming back. I'll let you know. I'll let for you sure. know for sure. And then, yo, when uh, with during the season two, if you got a little time, man, come through and talk about it too. For sure, yo. So thank you so much. Uh, every Friday, one p.m. right here on Island Block Radio. This is cocktails, movies, and stuff. Thanks for coming through. There you go. Mere alcohol. Cocktails, movies, and stuff. Cocktails, movies, and stuff. Cocktails, movies, and stuff. Island Block Radio.